chapter 12, the joy set before him. Hebrews 12 verses 1 to 2 Wherefore seeing, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Israel's descendants endured with patience the race that was set before them by looking ahead to the promises that were given to them of an everlasting kingdom and inheritance, and by that received a good report from God. They still wait for the promises, but those in the tribulation period will inherit the promises with little or no weight as the kingdom will be at hand as they suffer the worst time the world has ever seen. There will be no 2,000 or 3,500 years of waiting in Abraham's bosom to be resurrected to obtain the promises. It will come to them in a very short time. The author and finisher of our faith, this simply means that Jesus is the one who gave Israel what they were to believe, their gospel, in their day, and that would see them through to the end. The joy that was set before him, the redemption of mankind, set down at the right hand of the throne of God, Psalm 1, 10 verses 1 to 4, Hebrews 12 verses 3 to 4, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Such contradiction of sinners, surely the cure for those enduring the tribulation would be to consider Jesus, who though he was sinless, yet he endured the sufferings of the cross. He was not powerless to stop his crucifixion as others were. He could have prayed to the Father, and he would have given him more than twelve legions of angels to destroy the world and set him free. The number twelve is associated with Israel in Scripture. Matthew 26 verses 53 to 54. He endured being rejected by his own people, the twelve tribes of Israel, who he came to save. He fainted not, but set his face like a flint and went to the cross. No one has suffered like he suffered for us, so we should continue on for his sake. Hebrews 12 verses 5 to 6, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him, for whom the Lord loveth he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Proverbs 3 verses 11 to 12, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction, for whom the Lord loveth he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. Hebrews 12 verses 7 to 8, If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards, and not sons. Israel will be going through the time of Jacob's trouble, a time like no other. God is chastening his children at the same time he is judging the world. It is a far better thing to be chastened by a loving father than it is to be judged by a holy God. They need to endure the chastening of the father so he can deal with them as his sons in the kingdom. Hebrews 12 verses 9 to 10, Furthermore we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence, shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits, and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. The Father of spirits, to be the Father of something means that it comes from the one being called Father. The angels are called spirits, and they all came from the Creator, God the Father. In that sense, he is their Father. Partakers of his holiness, Israel will partake of Christ's holiness after they endure the chastening of the tribulation period. If they choose not to endure unto the end of it, they will not partake of his holiness. Matthew 24 verse 13, Hebrews 12 verses 11 to 13, Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous, nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore lift up the hands which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Israel is encouraged to endure the chastening because of what is waiting for them on the other side, the kingdom. They are encouraged to make straight their paths so they can live for him in that time or else it will trip them up and they are not able to enter their kingdom. Isaiah 35 verses 1 to 10, Hebrews 12 verses 14 to 17, follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator, or profane person, as Esau, who for one morsel of meat, sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, 
though he sought it carefully with tears. Esau did not inherit the blessing, because he did not endure his momentary suffering even though he pleaded with his father at the end. Those wanting at the last second to enter into the kingdom will be rejected as Esau was because when he had the chance, he did not honor his heritage. Israel has a blessing coming her way and those individuals who do not endure the hardships of chastening and given as Esau did will not inherit the kingdom. Hebrews 12 verses 18 to 22, For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness, and darkness, and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more. For they could not endure that which was commanded, and if so much as a beast touch the mountain, it shall be stoned, or thrust through with a dart, and so terrible was the sight, that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But ye are come unto Mount Shaun, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Mount Shaun, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, there is a Mount Shaun on earth, and there is a Mount Shaun in heaven whereupon the city of the living God is and it is called the heavenly Jerusalem. Do not confuse that city with New Jerusalem in Revelation 21. Hebrews 12 verses 23 to 24, To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. The general assembly and church of the firstborn, Israel is the church of the firstborn, not us. They were born as a church when they assembled in the wilderness at Mount Sinai after they came out of Egypt. Acts 7 verse 38 This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers, who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Instead of the one angel mentioned there in the church in the wilderness, the writer says these Hebrews are come to an innumerable company of angels, not an earthly mountain, but a heavenly one, not an earthly city, but a heavenly one, and to Jesus a much better mediator than Moses, the mediator of the new covenant, Moses brought in the old, and Jesus the new. Choose the new is the message here. Hebrews 12 verses 25 to 26 See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escaped not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape, if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Isaiah 13 verse 13 Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place, in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. Ezekiel 38 verse 20 So that the fishes of the sea, and the fowls of the heaven, and the beasts of the field, and all creeping things that creep upon the earth, and all the men that are upon the face of the earth, shall shake at my presence, and the mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. Haggai 2 verses 6 and 21, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens, and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens, and the earth. Him that spake on the earth, Moses, him that speaketh from heaven, the Lord Jesus. Hebrews 2 verse 3, How shall we escape, if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Isaiah chapters 2 and 13, speak of this great and terrible day of the Lord, when he shall judge the earth and all the inhabitants thereof. There will be no second chance. The kingdom will have arrived and all those that do not listen to the writer of Hebrews and those who have the spiritual rule over them in that day will not escape the judgment of God. Hebrews 12 verse 27 And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Those things that are shaken, they are identified in Revelation 12 verse 9 as the devil and his angels. Isaiah 13 verse 13, Ezekiel 38 verse 20, and Haggai 2 verse 6 and 21. They are shaken out of the heavens at the midpoint of the tribulation period and are cast into the lake of fire at the end of that time preceding the kingdom. Those things which cannot be shaken, this is identified as a kingdom in the next verse. Hebrews 12 verses 28 to 29, Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom, if you get who the we are here wrong, then you will be messed up doctrinally. Believing Israel, the little flock, will receive a kingdom, not the church, which is Christ's body. God will shake the earth as a winnower shakes out the chaff from the wheat, 
The believers who endured will enter into the rest of Israel's long-awaited kingdom of rest, while those who did not endure will be burned up with the chaff in a consuming fire. Chapter 13 The Everlasting Covenant Hebrews 13 verses 1-2 Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Entertained angels unawares, angelic activity in the tribulation period will be as it was in the days of Abraham, all the way through the earthly ministry of Christ and the early Acts period. We are not entertaining angels unaware today in the dispensation of grace. Angels have a responsibility to protect believers who are not sealed by the Holy Spirit as we are today. We do not need to pray for a hedge of protection around us today, because we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Ephesians 4 verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Hebrews 13 verse 3, Remember them that are in bonds, as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Them that are in bonds, during the tribulation period many will be imprisoned for their faith, and the believers then must remember them in prayer. They should reach out to the imprisoned one's family to see that they are taken care of because it will be impossible for believers to buy or sell in those days. Believers will be expected to give of what they have. The writer declares that here that there were many in bonds at that time. Some think only Paul was in bonds in those days, which was not the case. In the body, when someone is suffering adversity mentally, emotionally, or physically, they are to remember them and help ease their suffering just as they would wish someone to do for them. This is not a reference to the body of Christ, but to their actual physical body. Hebrews 13 verse 4, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. The bed undefiled, this is speaking of the marriage bed. Just because it is the tribulation period, God will not be winking at adultery and fornication. God expects them to be examples in a time when evil will be running rampant. Hebrews 13 verse 5, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Genesis 25 verse 11, And it came to pass after the death of Abraham, that God blessed his son Isaac and Isaac dwelt by the well Lahiroi. Hebrews 13 verse 6, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Psalm 27 verse 1 A Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 54 verse 4, Behold, God is mine helper, the Lord is with them that uphold my soul. Let your conversation be without covetousness. If they talk about the things they don't have, like Israel did in the wilderness, they will want to turn back from following God. Covetousness will lead to stealing something that belongs to someone else. God will take care of his people during this time. God tells Israel to flee into the wilderness, to a place he has prepared for them, to provide for them. Hebrews 13 verses 7 to 8, Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, and today, and forever. Them which have the rule over you. Here we see the position of a spiritual leader, ruler, that is over people during this time. In the tribulation period, believers will be in a life or death situation. Obeying them that have the spiritual rule over them could save their lives. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, and today, and forever. This saying is used totally out of context by many to say that spiritual gifts are for today. This is speaking about being submissive to leadership in any age, not gifts. Hebrews 13 verse 9, Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Divers and strange doctrines. This epistle will help those in the tribulation see the strange doctrines that will be prevalent then for what they are. The writer tells them not to let them carry them about, because they will carry them away to destruction. Hebrews 13 verse 10, We have an altar, whereof they have no right to eat, which serve the tabernacle. We have an altar. The believers in those times that flee into the wilderness have a better altar than those in the tabernacle. Hebrews 13 verses 11 to 14, For the bodies of those beasts, whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin, are burned without the camp. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Abraham was a sojourner in the land of Israel because he was looking for a city that was promised to him, and to his descendants, whose builder and maker was God. The city of New Jerusalem. Revelation 21. That city is said to be sought after by Israel here in the tribulation period, 
and it is to come in the kingdom when the kingdom of heaven comes to the kingdoms of this earth. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. Jesus suffered outside the gate, and so believers in that day must be willing to bear Christ's reproach and suffer without the camp, as those that will be living in hiding at that time. That is where the people will be sanctified, because that is where Jesus will be. He will not be in the Antichrist's tabernacle in Jerusalem. Hebrews 13 verses 15 to 16 By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Let us offer the sacrifice of praise. They will be offering actual animal sacrifices back at the temple on an altar. And the writer encourages the believing Jew in that day to offer spiritual sacrifices to God while they are without the camp. To communicate, this means to provide financially for those that are in need, and for those in spiritual positions of leadership. Hebrews 13 verse 17 Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy, and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Compare that with what Paul tells us in Romans 14 verse 12. Romans 14 verse 12 So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Hebrews 13 verses 18 to 19 Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience, in all things willing to live honestly. But I beseech you the rather to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner, that I may be restored to you the sooner, here the writer wants to be restored to his fellow Hebrew readers, whom he had been ministering to for some time. Since Paul was sent to the Gentiles, this verse about the writer wanting to get back to his Jewish readers implies that it wasn't him, as he is the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13 For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Paul was sent to the uncircumcised. In all his epistles, he never asks people to pray that he would be released, but that an utterance would be given unto him to make known the mystery of Christ, wherever he was imprisoned at. Hebrews 13 verses 20 to 21, Now the God of peace, that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. That great shepherd of the sheep, Paul never uses the word shepherd in any of his 13 epistles to the body of Christ. Israel is called sheep all the time in the scriptures. The believing remnant is referred to as the little flock in Luke 12 verse 32, Psalm 23 verses 1 to 2 and 80 colon 1. The body of Christ is a body, not a herd of sheep in a sheepfold. Paul never uses the word sheep relating to us. In Romans 8 verse 36, Paul quotes Psalm 44 verse 22 concerning Israel and he compares believers in this dispensation with Israel in the past. The blood of the everlasting covenant. This is for Israel who was under the old covenant and will be under the new covenant. The body of Christ is not under any covenant, nor ever has been. We are saved by grace, not by a covenant. Hebrews 13 verses 22 to 23, And I beseech you, brethren, suffer the word of exhortation, for I have written a letter unto you in few words. Know ye that our brother Timothy is set at liberty, with whom, if he come shortly, I will see you. Our brother Timothy, there are just as many reasons to believe this is the Timothy of 1 and 2 Timothy, as to believe it is not the same Timothy. Timothy was Paul's assistant, called an apostle by Paul along with Silas, and because their ministry was to the Gentiles, and not to the Jews, many believe it was not the same Timothy. Hebrews 13 verses 24 to 25, Salute all them that have the rule over you, and all the saints. They of Italy salute you. Grace be with you all. Amen. Written to the Hebrews from Italy, by Timothy. They of Italy salute you. This mention here implies that the writer was in Italy at the time this epistle was written, which is why I believe the writer is most likely Luke the physician. Hebrews is not a treatise, a legal document written for Paul's defense in Rome, but an epistle for those future kingdom saints that would be going through some of the same things, and worse, than those of the first century believers. Luke writes his treatise to Theopolis, who was a Roman official. Hebrews, however, is written to a nation of people that will have to go through the most terrible time the world will have ever seen, so God gives them scriptures in advance to help them through this time. Who better to write this book than Luke? Because he understood better than anyone else the programs to Israel and to the body of Christ. Hebrews serves as a transitional book back to the kingdom program for the nation of Israel, just before Jesus sets up his earthly kingdom. The doctrine in Hebrews alone proves Paul did not write this epistle, for its doctrine is to the Hebrews, or as Paul calls them, the circumcision in many of his epistles, 
and Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles, which are called the uncircumcision. Jesus is the head of the body of Christ in Paul's epistles, and in Hebrews its writer tells us that Jesus is its recipient's high priest. Paul's epistles are very Gentile in their makeup, while this book is totally Jewish in its makeup. The closing of Hebrews is identical to most the closings of Paul's epistles, Romans Philemon, in that he ends with some variation of grace be with you and for this reason, and others, some claim Paul is its author. This is not a proof, it is just a similarity. No judge would rule in your favor if this were part of your evidence, because it is only circumstantial evidence. If you are 100% convinced that this is proof that Paul wrote Hebrews, then turn to Revelation 22 verse 21 and read that verse, and tell me if that also proves that Paul wrote the book of the Revelation. It says the same thing Paul says at the end of his epistles. So that is an argument somewhat. Supporting Paul, but it is not conclusive at all. What is conclusive is what is stated in chapter 2 verse 3 that proves the author is not Paul. Go back and reread it if you need to.